Hello, this is Hans van der Kras, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. This video will demonstrate how to derive a catchment and its streams from an SRTM digital elevation model. The procedure in this video will use the new PC Raster Tools plugin. So make sure you have it installed in the correct way. We'll really start from scratch, so we need some orientation. We can use the Quick Map Services plugin, which can be installed from the plugins menu. Search for Quick Map Services and install the plugin. Click Close. The plugin is installed in the web menu. But here you see that the list of options is quite short. But if you go to Settings, you can go to the tab More Services and click Get Contributed Pack, which will install many more web map services. Here you see the complete list. We're going to use the OSM Open Topo Map because we need some topographical information to make an estimate of where approximately our catchment is located. We're going to derive the Ruhr catchment, which has an outlet near Ruhrmond, but we need to look at uh, the river systems on the map and the mountains to see where approximately the area is and to zoom to that area. Once we've determined the approximate study area, we can create a polygon layer from the extent. In the processing toolbox, search for the tool Create Layer from Extent. There you can use the drop down menu to use the map canvas extent. However, the coordinates here are in the coordinate system of the background map, and we need to use the coordinate system of our project which in this case is UTM Zone 32 North and WGS 84. So I changed the projection of the project to 32632 as EPSG code, and then I can use the map canvas extent. And now it uses the correct coordinates. I save the file to bounding box, make it a shape file, I run it, and there it is with the default color. Let's style it to make it a nice boundary line. So I use outline, simple line, a little bit black line there to indicate the boundary of our study area. The next step is to download the SRTM tiles. You can do that from USGS Earth Explorer, but there's also a nice plugin. It's called the SRTM Downloader Plugin. Install the plugin from the Plugins Manager. Click Close after installation. And it has added this icon here to the toolbar. Click on the icon and click on Set Canvas Extent. It will now use the boundary coordinates of your map canvas. You can click the download button. At some point it will ask for your credentials to log in to uh, the portal where the data is downloaded from. Use the link to create a new account or if you already have an account type here the credentials. You can also save the credentials. And then it starts downloading. If it's interrupted you just click download again. Like here it says connection closed. Just click download again and it will proceed. If this doesn't work on your computer, then you can use the USGS Earth Explorer web interface to download the tiles. So it has downloaded four images. You can click close. If I zoom out, I see it covers a much larger area than our uh, extent that we have determined for our study. Because we can't work with all these separate tiles, we're going to mosaic them. And the easiest way is to make a virtual raster. So we go to Raster Miscellaneous Build Virtual Raster, and we choose there the four tiles. We keep the default settings here as they are. 
and we save it to a new file. This will be a very small file which does not really copy the whole data but just provides a virtual link to the data and it's very efficient because we don't want to continue with this whole data set all the time. And uh, here we see it. I can remove the separate tiles. And I drag the bounding box to the top. Let's change a bit the style of the bounding box so it's clearer with the grayscale background. Make it red. And uh, you see that our study area is much smaller than this uh, mosaic of the DM tile. So we need to clip and reproject. And the easiest way to do that in one step is to click right on DM mosaic. And then choose export, save as. And there, choose a file name. Go at DM clipped. And I can choose the bounding box as the coordinates, but I first need to change the projection to the one of the project. Otherwise, it will be latitude longitude coordinates. So let's do that again. Now we have the correct coordinates. I'm going to change the horizontal and vertical resolution to 30 meters. And I use as a no data value an out of range value, which is minus 9999, which is often used. I click OK, and it's performing the clip and reprojection. And I can remove the mosaic and there is the result. Now let's quickly style this uh, DEM. It's a continuous raster so we use the single band pseudo color renderer. And there we can use a drop down to select a new color ramp and we're going to use the catalog CPT City, which has a lot of nice presets. There we go to topography and we can simply choose elevation or any other one here that we like. Then we need to click classify to apply the colors to the pixels in our DEM. Then there's a nice trick to add the hill shade uh, to the DEM colors by using blending. So we're going to duplicate the DEM layer. And it's good practice to rename the layer. We'll call it Hillshade. And let's make that one active. And here I use the Hillshade renderer, which on the fly renders the pixel values to Hillshades. When I zoom in, it gets a bit blocky, so I change the resampling to bilinear for zoomed in and cubic to zoomed out. And now I can use the blending mode on the DM clipped layer and I use multiply. And this gives a nice effect with adding the hill shades to the colors of the DEM. To further process the DEM for catchment delineation, we need to install the PC Raster Tools plugin. There are alternative ways using Grass or Saga. There are also videos on my YouTube channel about that. But the PC Raster tools provide a robust way of deriving the catchments and streams. PC Raster has a GDAL supported format, but we need to convert our DM first to the PC Raster format. So therefore we choose the tool convert to PC Raster format. And it's important to choose the correct data type, which is Scalar. Scalar is used for continuous rasters and PC raster is strict on the data types and will always check that when you perform the tools. So now we have the DEM in PC raster format. The next step in the workflow is to fill the sinks and to derive the flow direction. PC raster does this in one step using the LDD create tool. You can find in all these tools a link to the documentation which describes how it works and what the different arguments are that you can give to the tool. Here you see the different arguments and their descriptions and it will result in a flow direction map with the directions encoded with these numbers and these numbers 
correspond with the numeric pad on your keyboard. The different settings of filling are illustrated with this figure. And you can find some examples on the bottom of the page. We use the DEM of PC Raster as an input and we keep all the defaults to fill to the maximum possible. Therefore we use that those large numbers. Choose flow direction as an output and I run the tool, which can take a while. This is the most intensive calculation that you do in this procedure. So be patient and just wait until it finishes. We can close the dialog after processing. And now uh, we can have a look at the result. The flow direction is a discrete raster with values for the flow directions that correspond with our numeric pad. So to have a look at it, I use the palleted unique values renderer. And to see the unique values in the raster, I click classify. Here we see the different numbers. The colors, they don't really make sense. So we need to style this in a better way. And for um, flow direction, we need to use a directional ramp. And because the PC raster values are not very um, organized in a linear way, I'm going to convert the values with the lookup table to the ones used for Saga. So in our case, uh, value one is the southwest, and in Saga, that is value five. Because Saga starts at uh, zero for north, one for northeast, two for east, etc. Well, PC Raster uses again the uh, numerical pad of your keyboard. A special value there is uh, five for PC Raster, which means flat, and in Saga that is 255. So this will be our lookup table, which converts the PC Raster directions to the Saga directions. Make sure you change the range boundaries to be exactly the minimum and maximum. And for the output format, we can use a byte because it's eight bits, uh, which can store values from zero to 255, which will be sufficient. Let me save it to flowdir.diff. After processing, close the dialog and then we can start the styling. Go to the layer styling panel. Switch to palleted unique values. Click classify and here we see the numbers 0 to 7 and 255 corresponding with the Saga flow direction values. We remove the 255 because we are going to create a ramp for the other numbers based on the spectral color ramp. So we choose the spectral one and we can click on the ramp and say edit color ramp. And there we can modify those uh, stops. First, we're going to make the first color the same as the second one by picking the color. Then we change south to yellow, which is R255, G255, and B0. Then for east, we make R0, G255, and B0 to make it green. And then for West, we use magenta. We create that by using a combination of 214, 60, and 170. Now, if you want to do it uh, very correct, you also need to change then the last stop, which will be the Northwest, to a color that is somewhere in between the magenta and the blue. So somewhere between the southwest and the north. And click OK when you're done and then the color ramp is applied. So here we have a directional color ramp. The problem is that we still need to add 255. If we click the plus it adds 8, but 8 doesn't exist in the data set. So we need to type 255 for value. And then we can type the names of the labels to make it human readable. So each of the value numbers corresponds with a, with a flow direction that we need to type as a label. 255 is flat and therefore we also give it a white color by changing RGB to 255, 255, 255. 
and we type here flat. And there's the result, which we also see in the legend in the layers panel. You can use blending with the hill shade by putting the hill shade below and changing the blending mode to multiply for the flow direction. And when we zoom in, we can see then some uh, patterns if you go to the hills and we can interpret these uh, colors. And we can use a little bit of smoothing by changing the resampling settings there. So that's the result of the flow direction map. There are other ways to style the flow direction map using arrows, which is explained in another video. The next step is to derive our streams, therefore we need the Strahler orders. We can also use as an alternative the flow accumulation using Accuflux, but here we use the stream order tool from PC Raster to calculate the Strahler orders. As an input we use the PC Raster flow direction, so not the one we used for styling. And we save this as a Strahler. And then we run the tool and it results in this uh, nice map with for every pixel Strahler order. And we can style this and the larger the number, the bigger the stream. So we can use uh, paletted unique values because it's an ordinal scale. And we use their uh, blues as a color ramp. And I click classify, we get this nice effect where the darker blue the pixel gets, the bigger uh, the river is. But in reality, not all pixels belong to a river, so we now need to do some calibration to determine uh, which Strahler order threshold should be used to consider a pixel as being part of a river. And we can do that by um, calculating uh, Boolean maps with Strahler order larger or equal than a certain value and compare that with OpenStreetMap or with a satellite image from uh, Google Satellite, for example. And then the threshold that matches best uh, with what we see on the map or on the satellite image is then the value that we use for selecting the rivers from the Strahler order map. So we can do that by using the raster calculator. And I double click on Strahler, use the larger than or equal button and I start with a value of 5 and then I save the result as Strahler 5. The output will be TIFF files in this case. Click OK and there we see the result and I use the styling from the palette to unique values, remove the zeros, keep the ones can make it uh, blue to correspond with uh, the color of rivers. And I need to remove some of the layers uh, below. Then I hide all, keep the Strahler 5. And here I'll use OpenStreetMap as a background. And then I compare the result and I can already see that there are far too many streams when I use uh, order 5. So too many tributaries. So you repeat this for different values. I'll now skip a few values and go to 8. Go with Strahler 8. You can copy the style to save a bit of time. And I uncheck Strahler 5 to see the difference. We see now that many tributaries have been removed. And this one uh, looks like it corresponds quite okay with uh, the rivers on the map. The amount of tributaries, that's what we control with the threshold. And uh, it is a calibration of a model, so you'll never get it perfect, but uh, try to find the best result here. So now we can use that uh, threshold value that we determined for further analysis to derive the streams. So I go here to the spatial tool. The spatial tool simply creates a raster with a data type based on a value. So all the pixels will get that value in that data type. And I use here a value eight on an ordinal scale. And I use Strahler as a, a clone. 
and I call this uh, Ordinal 8. And there's the result, all pixels have value 8. That is because the PC raster tools use uh, mostly maps as inputs. So I can now use um, one of the conditional Boolean operators here, the comparison operator. And then I say if the input raster, which is uh, Strahler, is large or equal to ordinal 8, then give me Boolean true, otherwise give me Boolean false. So those will be our channels. This will tell us Boolean true for channels and Boolean false for where there are no channels. I'll paste the style here again and it will end up with the same uh, map when we have uh, Strahler 8. But now I want to have the Strahler orders for the river, so I need to use if then. So the Boolean condition is that if there are channels, so if channels is true, then give me the Strahler values, else give me no data. That's what if then does. With if then else you can also control what happens if it's false. I run this and now I see that our pixels of the river have the Strahla orders which I can style with palleted unique values because it's an ordinal scale and use the blues again and there we see that it has 8, 9, 10 and 11 as order for this area. Of course it's much nicer to present our channels network as uh, vector lines and therefore we need to convert the raster to vector lines and an essential step there is to use the r.thin tool from Grass to make sure that the raster lines are only one pixel wide and not as in this case multiple pixels. So as an input I use channel Strahler, I keep the maximum number of iterations and I save the output to a uh, geotiff, I call it uh, channels thin. Make sure you change it to GeoTiff, and then I save the result. I run it. And there we see the result, and we can now compare channels thin with channel Strahler, and we see the difference that it has only one pixel width now. But we also see that we can suspect some uh, other geometrical problems uh, later when we convert it to vector, which we will do now. So I use R to vect from uh, grass, use channel thin as an input, line feature type, I check the box use raster values as categories instead of unique sequence, that makes sure that it uses the pixel values and not uh, give unique numbers, change to line, and I save the file and call it channels. I click run and when it's done it close the dialog and there we see the result. It's not uh, perfect there are some geometrical issues like uh, overshoots and dangling nodes but overall uh, this is something we can now proceed with. There are procedures to correct this uh, but that's out of the scope of this uh, tutorial. Let's have a look at the attribute table of our channel's vector layer that we just created. Click right, open attribute table, and there we see that the cut field contains the uh, original raster Strahler order uh, values, but we need to uh, change that into a real Strahler order, so I add a new field order with length 1, and I'm going to uh, write here an equation to uh, convert them. I use the case when then end function and I write here when cut equals 8 then give value 1. So all values 8 will turn into Strahler order 1. When it's 9 make it Strahler order 2. 10 will be 3. And 11 the maximum in our case will be Strahler order 4. Then I need to close this with the end statement here and when I click OK now we see that those orders have been applied 
So those are the real Strahler orders from the method, because the raster ordering system gives every pixel a Strahler order, but in reality only the streams get an order. Then I can use the graduated renderer for the vector styling. I use the order field and I use the size method and change the size from 0 0.3 to 1. Change it to equal uh, count and then we need to change uh, the legend to discrete Strahla order numbers. You can also change the precision, then you have to type again. Change the color to something blue. And now we see our Strahler orders uh, nicely styled. So the thicker the line, the higher the Strahler order, and the bigger the river. In newer versions of uh, QGIS, you can easily use uh, tapered uh, line styles. There's another video that explains that. There's still an issue that uh, it still looks a bit uh, blocky because of uh, going from uh, raster to vector. So there's a way to smooth this a little bit. So we can look for a smooth tool here in the processing toolbox. And I want to do this uh, with in-place editing. Therefore, I click that uh, button there in the processing toolbox. And I use five iterations here in the tool. And the advantage of uh, in-place editing is that it will immediately save it in the layer and not in a copy. So you can inspect if it's okay or not. Otherwise, you uh, choose another uh, iteration value and then uh, when you're okay with it you save the results and uh, the whole line is selected so you need to unselect and here we see that it's now uh, smooth so now we can compare the result with the map so i switched on open topo map you can also use open street map or google satellite and uh, see how well the smoothed line uh, matches with uh, the river system and uh, here in the upstream it does it quite well Downstream is a bit more human uh, modified. And uh, now let's look for the outlet uh, to do our final step, which is deriving the catchment from the outlet. So there's the Ruhr River on the map, and here's the Meuse. And where the Ruhr gets in the Meuse, we have to choose our outlet. And uh, that needs to fit with our model. So we need to use the delineated stream. So we either use channels thin or channels uh, strala for that. Then we click right, copy coordinate and use the map coordinates. Paste the coordinates in notepad and add comma one. So it's a comma separated file with X, Y and ID number. If you have more outlets for which you want to derive the catchments, you can uh, add multiple lines to this file and it will, uh, with the catchment tool or the sub catchment tool, derive all the catchments and sub catchments that you list here. So save it to a text file and then I can use the uh, tool to convert this to a map, so column file to PC raster map, I choose outlet.txt that we just created. As a mask we use the flow direction and output data type is uh, nominal, so when you have multiple points uh, each catchment uh, will have uh, the values, the nominal numbers that it finds in uh, the outlet uh, map. I choose close. Now it's below our open topo map, so I need to uh, drag it to the top. Then I can style this. Always good to check if the result is what you think it is, so it only contains one value, one nominal value, one in this case for the outlet. And that's the outlet for which we are going to derive the catchment. So we're going to know which area drains to this point. I use the catchment tool. For LDD, I use the flow direction layer. For outlet, I use the outlet. And I save the result as uh, catchment.map. I run the tool. And I click close. Zoom to the layer. And now all the pixels with value 1 belong to outlet 1. So if you have multiple outlets, they will have their unique numbers. Now it's much nicer to present this as a polygon, so we can uh, use polygonize from uh, raster conversion. Use the catchment layer as an input, and then save the output. And let's call it Ruhr catchment.
I run it, and that's the result. I open the attribute table because I only want the catchment boundary, and you see that there are uh, multiple features here with values 0 and values 1. If I zoom to a 1, I see that there are some uh, geometrical issues there because of uh, going from vector from raster to vector so um, i'm not interested in those individual uh, pixels but i want to know the whole catchment and here i found it and uh, what i can do here is uh, invert the selection toggle on the editing mode and simply remove everything that is not uh, the catchment by clicking the trash bin and save the result so there's our catchment boundary polygon. Note that there's a little donut hole in it. Um, that's because of uh, uh, one of the mines that has its own uh, little catchment inside the catchment. And the fill sinks algorithm didn't solve that part. So I can now use a technique called inverted polygon shape burst fill. So I change the renderer to inverted polygons and the uh, other uh, symbol layer type to shape burst fill. I change the first color to gray. So 000 is black, 255, 255, 255 is white, and every combination in between of equal values of RGB results in a gray intensity. The second color is white, and I'm going to apply opacity of 65% here. And you can uh, see the effect on the map canvas in real time. So I set the distance. To 4 and I'm also going to increase the blur strength to uh, 10 and now you can really see the catchment popping out of uh, the map canvas which is a very nice effect if you want to highlight the study area and to shade the areas that are outside I also want a black line uh, so I added a second uh, symbol layer and uh, add a black line with a stroke width of uh, 0 0.46 millimeters. Now I want to apply this or visualize this with uh, the DEM and uh, the hill shade. I have to rearrange the layers a bit. Move the channels to the top. In fact, it's nicer to have the catchment boundary on the top so it shades the rivers that are outside. You can also clip that in the tutorial, it's uh, written how to clip it. Use the hill shade there, put it below the DM. And uh, there's a nice result the DM with the hill shade highlighted in the study area with the rivers on top of that. So let's uh, clip the rivers. I choose channels here as an overlay. I choose Ruhr catchment. I call it Ruhr channels. Run it. And I move it to the top. And I want to copy the style so I don't have to do that again. And there it is. But now this looks uh, great and we can use this further for uh, our map design. Now if we want to store all this data that we created, we uh, can package this in a geo package. So we use the package layers tool and we uh, select the input layers that we want to package. And I'm interested in rural catchment and rural channels only. And you can see here that the checkbox uh, saves the layer styles also in the geo package. That's very useful. Everybody who uses the geo package will then have the styled layers with the same styles as we uh, defined here. Note that we can only uh, store vectors in this way. If we want to store a, a raster, we can drag it to uh, the geo package. So here in the browser panel, we see our geo package. And I'm going to add here the DEM clips layer, the geo tiff, and I drag it to our geo package. When I release it, it's imported and there will be a message that the import was successful. Click OK. 
if I refresh the browser panel, I see now that DM is also there, but it doesn't have the styling. So what we need to do for our project is to make sure that uh, the layers refer to the layers in our geo package and not the ones that we have on our hard disk as files. So I'm going to copy the style of the DEM to the one of the geo package and remove the original one. For the hill shade, I can uh, simply recreate that by uh, duplicating the layer renaming it to Hillshade and then choosing the Hillshade Renderer. So I remove the original Hillshade and I add the rule catchment boundary. If you hover your mouse over it you can see if it's the shapefile or if it's from the Geo package. So here are all our layers. From the geo package at the top, I can remove the others. Now we can also save our project in the geo package. So we have everything together in one file in the geo package. So I choose Ruhr data and I save it as Ruhr. So now our project and the style data are in the geo package and can easily be shared with others. And we can use this for further. Uh, processing or adding other data.